Before the crisis, customers would spend freely, they tell me. Now their livelihoods are at risk, says Luanda Moskopoulou. She tells me it's no longer a question of trying to make a profit anymore. They just want to save the shop, to take in enough to pay the overhead costs, like the rent. At midday, their mother arrives, Sofia Moskopoulou, and I get to meet her grandchildren. Sofia is the first person to come into the shop since it opened today. I find out that she and her husband started up the business, fulfilling the Greek dream of owning your own shop and providing a stable existence for your children. Sophia tells me that they thank God that her husband is on a pension. It provides a secure monthly income. It's only because of this money that they get by, she says. I take a look around the town. I'm in Alexandria in northern Greece. It has a population of 25,000. There are many signs of the crisis here, the same you see all over the country. The cafes are empty. They used to be buzzing with people. Abandoned shops were a rare sight before the crisis. Now, every third one is closed. The signs read, to let. It gets me down. I've never experienced Greece this way, and I've got the feeling my mood is only going to get worse. In the cafe, I meet two young men, about 30, Antonis Anapoulos and Sotiris Daboulis. Right now, they've given up hopes of building careers. Both are living with their parents. They can't afford places of their own. At least they have jobs, they tell me. In their generation, around half can't find work. Sotiris says that he was unemployed for months. Now he has a job, but it only pays 500 euros a month. He tells me he has a degree in business studies, and now it's come to this. First-time job seekers are the worst off in the current economic situation, I learned from Antonis Yiannopoulos. He's a graphic artist, and he doesn't think about the future. He lives from one day to the next, without asking whether he'll still have a job tomorrow. He says he just can't see himself having the money for any major purchases like a car. I drive away from the town in my rental car. I can leave whenever I want, unlike all the Greeks for whom gas has become too expensive, after the tax on fuel was raised three times. A short drive out in the country has almost become a luxury. I'm heading for a village 50 kilometers south of Alexandria to meet up with the Moskopoulos family. I've been invited to dinner with them. Greek hospitality is still going strong. Thank goodness the Greeks aren't letting their traditions die, I think. The family regularly gets together for a meal on Saturdays. It's at their great-grandmother's home. She knows how badly the shop's doing and tries to offer support. The conversation's all about the economy. The 84-year-old says she worked in Germany for some years and was happy there. She wishes she'd stayed. But she had to return to Greece to care for her father-in-law, who was ill. We'd have had a better life there, she tells me. The children were young, and they could have gone to university there. I just had bad luck. Like many Greeks, the Moskopoulos family are pleased they have a garden and can grow their own fruit and vegetables. That helps balance the budget. It reminds me of being back in the 1970s, when many Greeks were poor. Sofia agrees. But there's an upside. We should just use things we produce here, instead of imported goods, 
and maybe export things too. In the evening, I go to a church not far from Alexandria to take part in a very special event. The Moskopoulos have been invited to the baptism of a new relative and have invited me along. Baptisms are rare in Greece these days, I'm told. Hardly anyone's getting married. Fewer children are being born. Times are just too hard. So when there's an occasion like this, people really enjoy it. They can forget their troubles for a few hours. The little boy is being christened according to the rituals of the Greek Orthodox Church with the name Mercurios. Afterwards, presents are handed out. Hosting a baptism doesn't come cheap. Mercurios' father is still quite wound up when I talk to him, even though everything went as well as it should on this special day. A child is the biggest source of happiness in your life, he tells me. He'd want one even if he had no money. He'd save up to have one. The family is the most important thing in life, he says, and he'd like to have a second child. At the party afterwards, the chat is again mostly about the economic crisis. Everyone here knows their country has to make big savings to pay off its mountain of debt. Many have had to accept pay cuts of 20 percent. Some have lost their jobs. I listen to what they're saying. This man's a banker. He says the country's prospects are poor. The European Union's plans aren't geared to save the country long term. They're a short term fix. The policy isn't economically wise, he says. This woman explains they don't want party politics anymore. People like her, with simple lives, can't do anything about the crisis and they can't take it anymore. The austerity measures have to be stopped. They're making the country worse, according to this lawyer. What should we do then? All emigrate? The government should adopt a bold crisis policy that has a chance of success, even if it means them losing office, he says. And a self-employed businessman concludes, the situation's serious. He says he fears the crisis will be around for 10 years. After all the conversations I've had on this long day, I too have the impression that Greece has at least 10 more trying years ahead of it.